So I'm going to give you a six minute uh, fly through of the research data strategy, but starting with the answer to two important questions. The second of which I think a lot of you in the room will probably know the answer to already. But the first question is, what do we mean when we say research data at the British Library? Well, we have a very, very broad definition of what that could be. And it's more about how you're using resources to answer a, resource, uh, a research question, i.e. in a computational way, rather than what the resource is. So if you're using it computationally, it's research data. Um, the second question, uh, which I think you'll be familiar with the answer, is why research data? Why does the British Library need a research data strategy? Well, um, for the uninitiated, it's because data underpin published research and policy, so the library needs to provide data if it wants to provide the world's knowledge. Numerous national, uh, regional, international calls have been made to make data available uh, to enable trust in research, trust in policy, value for money, transparency in government. Um, and so we need to achieve this vision in order to make research data core to what we do here at the British Library. Um, so the ultimate aim is being able to find access and reuse data for business as usual. And actually the research data strategy, although it doesn't explicitly say it in the title, also includes software because you can't really disconnect um, managing and making software available from research data. Um, the strategy itself is built on four themes, and each of these is split into more specific areas of work that I'm going to give you a little overview uh, of as we go along, and each of which also comes with a little kind of vignette, a hypothetical case study of things we want to see people doing uh, if we achieve this vision. They're not all on these slides. There's some in these booklets, which I have available. Come and see me afterwards. Um, so the first theme is data management, and this has a largely internal focus. And as uh, Sarah Gould mentioned earlier, we are an independent research organisation. We get money from AHRC, we get money through Horizon 2020, so we need to make sure that we can do data management planning here for our staff at the British Library. Um, so we're going to have process and plans in place they can take advantage of so they can reuse whenever they're putting in um, funding applications around data management planning. But also training will be a part of that. So we need to train our staff, make them understand what data management is, um, <laughs> and, um, and pass that on to other IROs, especially the GLAM IROs, but not especially. Um, data creation is the second theme, and this is understanding how we can turn our digital collections into research data um, in order to help our users derive new forms of knowledge from what we already hold. This also creates opportunities to make information available that we're unable to do off-site. So, for instance, the archived web we can't make available off-site, but we can create data sets from that and make that data available off-site as well, outside of the building. It's not only internal because we can take what we learn in terms of turning our collections into data and share that amongst this community, so we absolutely want to do that as well. Um, but we should also be looking at how we take in data from third parties. It's absolutely impossible for the British Library to turn around and say, we will collect every bit of research data out there in the UK. Um, so what we want to do is link what we do have with people who hold it um, elsewhere. And actually, our data can provide important context for collections of others. So that's historical context, sociological context, but also, you know, geographical, contemporary. We have lots of context we can add to other people's data. We already do this. Again, uh, Sarah's helped me out by talking about data.bl.uk already. And as you've seen, our data sets are already being used by researchers for things like examining the career paths of PhD researchers, um, but also mapping chartist meetings, mapping the speaking tours of um, black uh, slavery abolition abolitionists across the UK as well. And then if we're doing creating data, we're taking it in from third parties, we also need to make sure we're preserving it as well. So we already know we can do physical and digital preservation of textual and image materials. That's routine here at the British Library. But what we want to do is make sure that we can do that for research data in its many and multiple um, formats and contexts as well. Um, we can potentially do that for other people's collection, uh, data collections as well, looking at preservation, but the strategy does not explicitly define potential um, services and exactly what they would look like because the landscape is moving. We don't want to go out there and say this is what a service will look like and then in 18 months' time that's not what you need anymore. So the strategy provides us the opportunity to go out, do that research, talk to the community, find out your needs and then bring that in to see what the service should be. We know that a lot of it um, could be bolted onto data site, which I will come to in a second. 
second. Um, the fi final theme is discovery access um, and reuse. Um, so this is just making sure that the data that we know is out there in our collections, in your collections, in other people's, um, is available for people to find access and use um, on-site, but also for users we have off-site. So that might involve signposting, but there will also be a big element of uh, providing deep discovery within data sets. So we need services that enable people to do uh, text and data mining here at the British Library. As a result, that means our frontline staff need to have the skills to support users uh, in doing that. Now, that doesn't mean that they have to be, you know, savvy data scientists. It just means that they need to have an awareness of the tools and the data available that's out there. Um, there's also an opportunity to widen access to restricted data, so we want to look at services and mechanisms and spaces within the library that enable bona fide researchers outside of academic context to access uh, restricted um, data according to the needs of data stewards as well. We'll also continue to support data accessibility through Datasite UK, which I've mentioned a couple of times. So those of you who don't know what it is, it's us providing persistent identifiers in the form of DOIs to make research data citable and accessible. We work with over 90 organisations of all kinds to do that now. And actually what we want to do is co to continue to collaborate with those uh, Datasite UK users, but also the general RL UK um, community because actually the British Library can't and actually has no need to go it alone in meeting this vision in terms of research data strategy. We want to work with all of you um, and so you know take advantage of the good things you're doing, the good things we're doing and bring it all together. So um, if you want to hear more come and speak to me and also you can grab one of these. Thank you.